everybody. Welcome to Dulce America. My name is Bing Futch. Thank you for joining me. This is episode number four for the month of February 2020, where we've been looking at one piece of music, laying down tracks, and learning a whole bunch of things all wrapped up into one delicious golden nugget. Basically, we've been dealing with a piece of music that's got a key change in there. Key changes are really amazing things to put into your music, whether you're a songwriter or just adapting somebody else's song. It's a way to keep things interesting, uh, to include some dynamism, and as well, it's a great way to inject a change of environment, atmosphere, excitement by going into a different key. There are a number of ways to do it, and not all of them are easy for the mountain dulcimer, but we worked on one this month that is fairly simple. It is a parallel key modulation. And what we're doing is we're taking two different keys that share the same tonic. In this case, A minor and then A major. They both share A as the tonic. It works and we're going with that. So we started off by recording the chord progression on Mountain Dulcimer. Then we added a track of bass and then we added a solo improvised line. And in this episode, we're gonna put it all together in Logic Pro X in the digital audio workstation world and show you how that works. And hopefully out of all of this that happened this month, you'll have a really good idea about how you two can take your music and uh, get it out of the rehearsal space and uh, onto a cassette, did I say cassette, vinyl, onto an MP3 uh, to share with your friends, family, or maybe even put up on YouTube or Spotify or, or whatever else. It's not difficult, and I'll show you a few of the ropes right now. Let's go over to Logic Pro X. Okay, so I am inside of Logic Pro X, and uh, I got some housekeeping to do here because I've just been shooting the video and running back and forth, as you know. Uh, let's see, we've got our chords here for dulcimer. So I'm going to name this track Chord Dulcimer. All right, then this is going to be bass, track two. And we've got solo. Let's call that improv. All right, and then we've got Austin on the drummer track here. All right, so I've called this track Parallels because we're working with a parallel key modulation. Let's uh, do a couple of things quick before we get started. Number one is if there's any space where there's music not playing, I like to cut that stuff out. Even if it's ultra quiet, it's nice to get that dead air out of there because even though it seems like dead air to us, there's still bits of the sound frequency spectrum that are lurking there and they tend to clutter things up so I'm just getting rid of this stuff right here so we have a nice clean intro we got our drums are gonna kind of beat along for a little bit and then everything comes popping in this hasn't been mixed this is just uh, the raw track so let's go ahead and go back to the beginning and have a listen soloed the chord dulcimer track so I can check it out by itself.
right, so I've been working, obviously, and uh, I've been throwing some graphics up here on the screen to show you what I'm doing. Uh, basically, this was all like done very, very quickly, very, very on the fly, but this is the basic uh, pro uh, procedure to, that's, that sounds so clinical, this is the basic way of going about recording and mixing a track. First we get the tracks down, we hope we have good signal, and uh, and then we can come back and do our mixing and editing and, and stuff like that by cleaning up these uh, areas where there's nothing going on, by fading in and fading out if we want to. Uh, the, the, and then the other thing is to go through and just make sure that the sounds aren't fighting each other. Make sure the levels are good so everything can be heard. And sometimes, you know, it can take many, many, uh, many hours to mix even the simplest of tune. And uh, this one in particular, I would like to add some more stuff to it, but at this point in time, I think I just kind of want to mess with the drums here to give it more of a dynamic feel. The thing I like about the drummer here on uh, Logic Pro X is that you can lay down a simple track like we've got. I'll solo it out here. You can come in after the fact and change it up and, and, and alter things. So let's do this. Let's figure out the first time we want something to happen. So right here, we're at the end of a phrase. And I think here is a good point to change things up. So I like the basic feel we got, but I'm gonna go ahead and throw a fill in here. So I've double clicked on the timeline where the drum track is. I'm gonna dial up the fill to about uh, like a quarter. That should be uh, not too wild of a fill, but still exciting enough to change things up a little bit. Let's hear how that sounds. there, which is exactly what I'm looking for at this point. We'll go through another area there without changing anything. I'll put a slightly more aggressive fill on this one. And then right here is our key change. So since we have that exciting change of a feeling in the chord uh, movement, I'm also going to use the XY pattern here and get a little bit louder and a little bit more intricate and also make sure we throw in some fills. Let's check that out. since I didn't touch them, are back to the volume and the, uh, the style that we had before. I'm going to keep the same level, kind of, but I'm going to make it more complex than simple since we're getting deeper into the tune. And, and then I know that here, this is our conclusion, going back to the key change. So once again, I'm going to up the ante here I'm also going to add in a tambourine and some cymbals. And just again, we want to make a nice little journey from start to finish with some new elements popping up every now and again. And then we have the ending. Now, of course, the drums just went on without us, and I went ahead and ended the tune. And so on the downbeat, I'm going to show you a trick here for uh, getting this thing to wrap up with you. Let me go ahead and magnify this area, let's see where we want things to actually end. All right, so right there, and you can actually see the waveform very clearly where the last chord and the last note is struck, and it's right there at the beginning of measure number 64. So I'm going to get on the drum track here, and I'm going to cut it right there, but I'm not going to 
delete the whole thing. I want to leave one last drum uh, event to match what's going on here. And this program is so smart that instead of going on and doing the pattern it was doing before, it'll recognize that this has been shortened and it'll just hopefully give me um, maybe a kick, a snare, and maybe some uh, a splash of cymbal to end the tune. Let's see how that worked out. When a plan comes together now once again this is a fast food job at this I'm just kind of running through it real quick and it's a very very simple project we have with four tracks three of them are instruments are they're the same instrument basically two of them are a similar timbre they're similar tone and they're in the same frequency range the bass is a little bit below that so with the mountain dulcimer I find that it can be very mid-rangey and uh, so a lot of work needs to be done once you get the basic mixing done to sit down with it and start to sort of surgically get in there and get rid of some of those frequencies that are creating a muddy mix and also uh, you know, some ear irritation because of the frequencies. Right around 1,000, 2,000 hertz, there's a lot of real nasty stuff that should be eliminated. But let's go back to the beginning here and see if we can carve some stuff out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do one last pass through and do an overall EQ and compression and um, just kind of tweak some things again. Boy, this is a, a real quick rush job, about 20 minutes spent mixing it now and uh, maybe a total of, so what, so like how long is this thing? We're at, uh, two minutes and 37 seconds long. So one take uh, each time, so that's two, four, six, you know, like about seven or eight minutes total has been spent playing the thing and then about 20 minutes spent mixing the thing uh normally i would spend a lot more time on a project than this but 
I hope this serves as a really good example of what the process is like. Uh, so this final step I'm going to take involves uh, me closing the editing, editing area and taking a look at the stereo out. I can go to the mix here and uh, open my mixer. And then there's my master here. So on the stereo out, I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring up the EQ. And I'm also going to get a compression on here. But first, I want to see what the whole track is looking like as a whole. So here we go. everybody that is going to wrap things up for this month thank you so much for joining me for this really interesting exploration into a lot of different things from uh, key changes to playing bass to laying in different parts to improvisation to actually uh, recording it all mixing it down and spinning it out as a finished track uh, if you want to find out more information on any of this stuff, please drop me a line at bingfutch at yahoo.com. Also, make sure you go to patreon.com slash bingfutch. Check out the open house section there in the featured tags area at the top of the page, and you'll be able to find downloads of resources for not only this episode, but all of the episodes from this past month and other things that have been offered here on Dulce America as well. Coming up next, I have no idea, but we'll all be surprised next Friday. Thanks again, everybody. We'll see you soon.